Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be a great matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday Night Football. And on the call, as always, it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it is a cold night in western Pennsylvania as we bring you inside Heinz Field here in Pittsburgh. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh Steelers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we look at this Steeler ball club entering play. They come in riding high, just one loss in their last seven games. It's a very focused team, very disciplined. They kept the penalties to a minimum, and they're winning football games. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Eagles, they've certainly found their groove of late, winners of five in a row. And I think the sky's the limit for this team. They're playing the best football that they've played in a long time. which right usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him to win. First carry for James Conner. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. And let's take a look at the Steeler offense. And congratulations on their win last week, but they didn't get a whole lot of time to celebrate it on Sunday. They were right back to work on Monday, but you have to do things differently when you prepare for a Thursday night game. Because normally you'll take some time off. Here you get right back to work, work on the game plan mentally, and probably not put any pads on until you play again Thursday night. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 30. That one good for 14 yards in a Steeler first. Pick it up, defense. Let's go. That's good for us. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. The last run got six. Now second and four. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete here. Starters on the defensive side of the ball. They're in the spot statistically that you don't want to be in against the pass. Number 32 in the league, dead last. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. But it's brought in by Washington. And he has another first down as they get the ball down to the Eagles' 41-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the program. But it's really so effective. Nice completion there. Right, Keeps the sticks moving. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Parks there, coverage to knock it away. Here now is second and 10 again for the 41. On second down, Samuels. Call it about a gain of three and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. And that's like one of the blitz even on run downs. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow his offensive lineman to get up to the second level. On third down, Roethlisberger. Short little throw to Ebron. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there all 
also a first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. Ben leaves to counter on the draw. And down inside the 15, shot of the 10. Let's go, Let's go first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because of that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all this stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Jack and Bird! On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. touchdown but you don't feel like a knockout is there but they keep doing that in the fourth quarter that's when the knockout will go and becomes tough for that defense if they're on the field that long we'll see if they can continue that in future drives so the drive goes 75 yards 10 plays and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown this will be fielded at the six so quick on the spin oh he's spinning man and a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. Leading the charge under center will be their 6'5 quarterback, Carson Wentz. I know teams always talk about having a 24-hour rule after a game. And eventually we end up rolling our eyes. But it works both ways, right? 24 hours if you win, 24 if you lose. But boy, it's a fun 24 to win the game. And you win NFC offensive player of the week, isn't it? Absolutely. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. Quickly now to look at the Eagles' offensive starters. And they should be set up for a big game. They have one of the hottest offenses in the league. They're coming in riding a winning streak, but we've seen these quick turnaround games really wreak havoc with what you've done previously. Hopefully they simplified their offense, and they'll just let their playmakers go out and do what they do best. From the 27, Wentz. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Ben Dupree, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Ben, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all out rush like that, I fire it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit him with a screen soon. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Winston Company with some work to do after the sack. From the gun, it's Wins. Complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That's good for 28 yards. Will be accepted. Still the offense backwards. Mike, 55. Check, 55. Mike. Hey, defense. Now, win. 
Lawrence on the boot leg. He's got the hook up here with Deshaun Jackson. And they've got it well across we got midfield, this. down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A gain there of 21 yards. Okay, what can't Deshaun Jackson do? Right, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game. And he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. We have. What are you, are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders. <laughs> and Deshaun Jackson made that big time return all the way back <laughs> for a game winner in that one. I still remember seeing the looks of disbelief on the Giants sideline. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 18 carries, 54 yards. Right, he's playing a Thursday night game short week. You know he spent a lot of time in the trenches, running in the court, tub, trying to get his legs back for this game. That's complete to a speedy wide on Goodwin. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Marquise Goodwin, his sixth touchdown of the season, as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him. Let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Elliott good with a PAT. And we are tied at seven. So this drive spans seven plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers' offense now, they head go, back onto the field. Okay. And that last drop, a long drive, but not back, just that. Back, they go. had a great play. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the... That's caught inside the 20. And he's going to take it in for a steal touchdown. Juju Smith-Schuster, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers have taken the lead. See, it's a pretty good offense here in this first quarter. It's been a wild start to this quarter, as you noted. And now with that lead that we're seeing, can they retaliate? I get the sense this one's going to go back and forth all game long. And that probably won't be the last long touchdown that we see in this one. Touchdown their last goal right? Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Throwing on second down. Wentz and complete to Zach Ertz. Charles Thursday night game. I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in the middle of the week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? So who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. It's a sneak. It's wins. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. They only needed a few inches, but still some anxious moments there. But they do convert on fourth. 
So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first and 10, it's Clement. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter games turn into bigger runs later. Here we go, here we go. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. Working from the gun, Lance. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Stephon Turo able to shake free and get home for the sack. Yeah. That pass has been a real strength of late. They need to get out of the quarterback. Absolutely. Four sacks last week. That's their first one here. Anything in particular you've seen from them or on film? I think that they're winning athletically up front, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. But also, when the offensive line wants to keep everyone in and mass protect, they know how to scheme their way back to the quarterback as well. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here is away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly it. Now good hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28 yard line. It's very cold night air. How much harder, Charles, is it to oh, yeah. hang on to that football? It's a lot harder, and I know for the most part we think about a ball being slick when there's rain or snow, any type of moisture. But when it's cold and dry, it and, is cold, cold, and, and it is cold, it is also slick that way because you're not able to really grip it the same way. Your hands are cold, and, and, and then the hits seem harder. So, yeah, it's a lot more difficult to hold on to the football, which means you have to emphasize it that much more. Wind chills right now, 12 degrees. The Pittsburgh offense had the line to start their next drive. And last drive, this is not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. you got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky. Because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Now it's Ron Fishberger. And he is going to go down. They sack him. On the final play of the first quarter. Your shot. Your shot. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Jordan Berry to punch for the spot. On fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Yeah, he was looking for the check up bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Eagles offense set to begin the next drive. They punted last time they had it. What sticks, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Let's just go to the football. 101, the trade expression. 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down. And make it a second and three. Second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Then they'll get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A big pick up there for the Eagles first down, 18 yards. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen with it faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, but all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pick up. And they've got it go. well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. They all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. From their own 40 to the other 40. The gain of 20 leads to first and 10. Wentz defers to Clement. 
And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Stephon Tua came out very good. There's another one of those really tall defensive ends. It just worked out. Will they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer at that time. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. The Eagles on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Williams. It's caught by Jackson. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. That'll put him at an even 50 receiving yards now in this first half. And it's a first down. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. What? But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And they're right there in that middle ground. Field goal range. Can't go for it, but as you said, they picked it up. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. From the 24. Wentz, and that's incomplete. Devin Bush, the linebacker, was the one there in pass coverage. The Eagles on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Wentz now to throw. The header going to be knocked away. And incomplete. Steven Nelson able to get a hand in in coverage. Something we haven't really seen much of from him. An incomplete pass. Yeah, last week he finished at 70%. This week he's up over 80%. I don't know how you slow him down. Pass rush is usually the best way because a quarterback on his back usually can't complete pass. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets him three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive. But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line. Made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal. But they moved the ball down the field with dispatch. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They begin on the ground here with Connor. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. First play of the drive, let's get all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. On second down now, Samuels. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Yeah. All that happens. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Oh, heavy rush and down he goes. Trevor Williams was shot out of a cannon there on the corner blitz. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Barry on the punt as he gets this one away. Here's Jackson. An excellent return that time. 26 yards. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative. Seventeen yards and a first down for Philly. That next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And he's taken and down the receiver down the reaching the 10-yard line. Too far downfield, something Let's those go, linemen go. have to watch out for. Still that time down. it costs them. Here we go, here we go. Check. Go. 
Solid, solid. Here's Wentz to throw. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Let's go, man. Good Let's go. Up there, 26 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Wentz now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Now it's Clement. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. It's a you good got down to four. It'll bring up second hey. down. From the 16, Wentz. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Seven yards on the pick up there. And now they'll have it first and goal. Here's Clement. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six yard line. Really all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against him. Second down and goal. Wentz. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion. But he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So he may have caught it. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Carson Wentz with two first-half touchdown passes. And once again, the Eagles are back out in front. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel they would come back and try it on fourth down. Kelly it good on the extra point, and it's now 17-14. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Is fielded at the two. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Let's two go. minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up hey, at the half, 20, reminder, 20, we go back to Orlando to check in with go. Jonathan Coachman. And I'll look back on our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Now a man open down the middle of the field. A gain of six there. To throw again on second down. Rathlisberger. He finds his man, Johnson. Here we go, here we go. Seven yards there and a first down. Now Rathlisberger to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Black 30. Check back 21. No chance. Looking to throw again on second down. Roethlisberger. Ebron with it over the middle. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Roethlisberger now 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys at first and 10. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. And the throw again. Short little throw to Ebron. And he works it to the 30 yard line here, right at the 30. That one a first down pick up of eight. Now a timeout single for her. Now get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Here we go. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the 1-2 to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, 
Not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. And he breaks it all the way out to the 38-yard oh, line. Great let's return. Go. Let's go. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play call is just beyond it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big shot down. No, no, no. Guarantee the head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you two in just a moment. First, we just want to give everybody a look ahead to what's in store for us this weekend as we enter the final month of this NFL season. One of the best of the early games, we'll highlight it there. The Giants in for a stern test at home at MetLife Stadium as they'll host the Washington Redskins. Good games in the late afternoon as well. One being out in Santa Clara, where it'll be the 49ers taking on the Dallas Cowboys. And finally, Sunday night football. They've got a good one lined up between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentator, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Come the Eagles now as they're going offense first here in the third quarter. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half goes. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. Here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect. But overall, you like what your game plan showing you. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes us forward for about six. We'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. On play action, it's Rance. And he finds his tight end, it's Ertz. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A first down there on a pickup of 25. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. This is taken at his four. 
And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now whistles, and we've got a man down. A man down here following the kickoff. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The Steelers offense here about ready for their next drive. And this game was all square at halftime. Now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching up point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. You see me? Defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So I just went his way back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. There's nowhere to go with the football. That led to the side. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So that one will be accepted. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tag and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than you're trying to figure out how to fix things up. The stop for no game brings up second and ten from the 20. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. They run out of the gun with Clement. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play, but he's second down. Looking to throw on second down. Wentz. Now they set up the screen for Clement. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Chop that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. Well, that second down completion, something of a disaster, and now they're left with third and long. And he connects with Ertz. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A nice pickup of 23 on the third down conversion. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Here we go, here Wentz now hey. right at the 300-yard mark with still a quarter plus to go. It's first and 10. To throw his wins. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And he gets we this inside it. the 35-yard line. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. Wentz going to lead these guys up first and 10. And he's four for four now throwing the ball to start the drive. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Play action. Wentz. Deep ball for Jeffrey. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they look to throw. And Jeffrey's got it. So much about offense is what you call hitting the yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there limiting that and keeping them from the first down. They stopped him in his tracks. Now wins the keeper. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion. And defensively, pure frustration. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. A quick throw out to Jeffrey. 
No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained to the behind schedule on down the distance. Thank you for hoping to get it to him. He can make a man or two miss, but that window comes quickly. That's complete right around the end. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Hey, check, check. Now wins. Yeah, he's got it. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown on Philadelphia. Zach Ertz, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Elliott on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So that would be 13 play drive in total. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. On second down, Connor looking for space. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 12. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. From the gun on third down, it's Rockersberger. Able to find Switzer. But he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. 25 yards that time. Yeah, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receivers' eyes when he's throwing the ball. On second and seven, Roethlisberger, Duke Riley, able to record his fifth sack of the season. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Eagles offense set to begin the next drive. They really distanced themselves. They have put the pedal to the metal, I guess, so to speak. So definitely have them in the rearview mirror, don't they? I mean, you're exactly right. Being able to string together these drives that end up with points, it's almost like a run in basketball to create that distance, and they're in a really big time. It becomes contagious, doesn't it? It absolutely does, because oftentimes, 
it translates to your defense as well, because they're excited about getting the ball back for their offense that's playing so well. well they are clicking right now. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Well, that's complete to Jeffrey. And he's going to be taken down about a yard shy of the first at the 29. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because... And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. 17 yards on the fake punt, and that's going to be a first down. So they snap it straight to the up man. What's his responsibility? Normally, obviously, just to protect, but he's got to be a guy that can be pretty agile too, right? Yeah, without a doubt, because you're talking about a guy, even in protection, he may have to slide up and down the line of scrimmage to pick up someone that comes through trying to block a punt. So you know he's got that ability to move. But oftentimes it's a user, a running back, a fullback, someone who's used to having the ball in their hands, and he's able to pick up the first down. Give him a couple of the catch at second and eight. Now a play fade. Wentz. He's going to lock one deep over the middle. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And it's third down. The Eagles on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and eight. And now is Wentz. He's got his man on the crossing route. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 32-yard line. Celebrating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. A carry for Clement. There to make the tackle, Steven Nelson. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to take it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. From the red zone now, Wentz. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. T.J. Watt has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. It's an interesting partner that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But if you get even deeper in the territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. The Eagles on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This will be third and six. Throwing his wins to the end zone, but it's incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple of weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? And that's going to be caught for an Eagles touchdown. A 13-yard touchdown. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Elliott Good with a PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep him warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. Here's Roethlisberger. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. 
And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting. Not and got his man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before they can stop just before the 35. Well, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert. Here we go, here we go. Like 80. So how about that for a chain move? Yeah, it's all the down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Like Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Ready? Line of scrimmage again to 37 as they line up second and 10. Black, what's that? To throw again is Roethlisberger. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Ryan Switzer, the one he was looking for. But now it'll be third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Again, it's Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDowell. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw the ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And the Eagles defense able to hold. That's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bud Dupree make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Brandon Moore up in the night, you'd say they had his number. We can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. To try again after the sack. Wentz. And the pressure gets to him again. Bob Dupree in there to get him. And on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's got back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charlie, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a play. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. No gain on the They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. Well, that gives him a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time, he might actually pop one of these runs. The bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. Seems pretty obvious defensively the key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to come from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position back as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, 
move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs. The help will flip the field. It's going to be something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Going to look deep for Jeffrey. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Alshon Jeffrey with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And that'll increase their lead to 28. Makes the score Eagles 45. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. How many times have we done games where we've seen that they have a big game like this? It's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people that have big games as well. Yeah. To Pittsburgh first Let's down, go. a gain of 13. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. But you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Go, go, go. They're going to pick up their 26 yards. Now it's Roethlisberger. Got an open man, it's Washington. Here we go, here we go. Got a gain of three to the 33. Black, what's that? Throwing again on second down. Roethlisberger. And his throw here is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense is just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. They blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Well, he had it on line, gave it a pretty good ride, too. But in the oh, end, he's a victim Lee. of the crossbar. And Brandon, you know kickers very well. I bet if we ask him after the game, he'll say he didn't get all of it. We've seen him hit from deeper than this in warm-ups. But here, he's a footer set from clearing that bar. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Hey, watch the slant. Wins to throw. Going to look deep for Jeffrey. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So after the second down in completion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Wentz now to throw. Now he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts. Now leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter. Mighty. Wentz now on first down. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Again, it's Wentz. This is caught. 
And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five on the go. way to the three. Here we go. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. They probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Again, they'll throw with Lance. And he takes it in for the score on the game's final play, so it doesn't affect the outcome, but a little whipped cream on top to their ending. Or as our friends in Bayou Country would say, that's a little letting you out, a little extra on top. I tell you, Charles. You play to the final whistle, I get that, but there are a few folks that might not be too happy with that score late in the game with it already well in hand. You seem a little squeamish about that last score. I struggle with it. I struggle. But on the other, the, the argument I get it on the other side is, hey, do something about it. Stop it. Well, I guarantee you, I know he's really excited. Fantasy owners. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, give the points for me. They're not worried about her feelings or anything like that. That's just new age stuff. Well, we saw action to the final whistle in this one. Not only the touchdown at the end to add to their lead, then they tried to put more on top of the two-point conversion, but didn't get it. That's someone that wants to win and by as many as possible. They don't get the two-point conversion to add on top, but just the idea of going for it with that type of a lead already when they didn't need 